Students, in the previous class, we have discussed about the different types of seasons, and in this lesson, we are going to discuss about the factors which are affecting the seasons, and we have to understand these are the factors. So we have to understand these factors to understand about the effect of seasons, how they are affecting the seasons here. The first one is the curvature of the earth. Already we learnt about the curvature of earth in the previous class, in the previous period. Here, this is the earth is in spherical shape like a ball, and these are the curvature. Due to these curvatures, the all the parts on the earth surface are not receiving the same amount of heat and light from the sun. So, sun rays are not falling in the same area toward the earth surface. The Generally, you know, the equatorial region, in the equatorial region, sun rays fall directly, it receives more amount of heat and when we compare to the north poles and south poles, because of the curvature, the sun rays are travelling more distance and the, the occupied area is also more, occupied area is also more here and the occupied area is less and the distance is less, the occupied area is less. Due to that, the intensity of sun rays is more than the north poles and south poles. So this is about the curvature. The curvature is also an important thing. Second, the earth rotation. What is earth rotation? Earth revolves itself on its own axis is called rotation. So this is what is earth rotation and what is axis here? Axis is an imaginary line which joins the north pole and south pole. Actually, there is no real axis is there and the earth rotates like a top, like the top spin, like the top spin, it, it is rotating and its axis, this is the imaginary line axis, what is the axis, axis joins the north pole and the south pole, on this axis earth rotates, so this is earth rotation, okay, earth is rotate, rotating, <coughs> And its axis. Only half part, only half part of the, only half part of the globe, half part of the earth is receiving the light from the sun. The opposite side, the back side of the, the back side of portion of the earth is not receiving the sunlight at the same time, at the time of front hemisphere and the northern hemisphere. So, Finally, the rotation of earth, due to the rotation of earth, the day and night are occurring, day and nights are occurring. So, day and nights are caused by the rotation of the earth on its own axis. This is the thing. And earth moves from the west to east. For example, you place a go you place a globe in front of you, it stands before you and from your left to right, earth is moving. It means the western places of the earth moves to the eastern side. So that is the rotation of the earth here. This is the, so finally we get the half of the earth, finally we get the sunlight for half of the earth, the remaining half is in dark position. This is one thing. And third one is the, the tilt of the axis. This axis, this axis, this is a vertical line. This axis is tilted. It makes an angle of 23 and half degrees. It makes the an angle 23 and half degrees. Of course, there is a 66 and half degrees here and 23 and half degrees here. Due to this angle, due to this angle, Earth is receiving the northern portion of the Earth's surface, receiving the sunlight in some season and in the southern portion of the Earth is receiving the sunlight in another, another months. So, the change in the 
receiving of sunlight from months to months depends upon the tilting of this axis for example if there is no tilt if there is no tilt of this axis what will be happen the places which are facing the sun which are facing the sun will receive the will receive the same amount of light and energy throughout the year throughout the year and the another places towards the north and towards the south they will not they will remain in the same position and for example equatorial region this is more temper more more light and energy from the sun so the situation will be continued throughout the year here and there will be no seasons so similar amount the constant weather and climate positions will be there on a single place and there is no change in the hot and cold conditions for example it receiving the more temperature throughout the year so it is very hot and these areas will receive the very less temperatures they are very cold and the very cold conditions and very hot conditions are not suitable for for the living things on the earth surface so there is no scope of there is no scope of biosphere on this earth surface if there is no tilt of the axis of the earth so this is the advantage of this tilt of this axis and the revolution what is revolution earth rotates on its own axis as well as it moves around the sun the earth moves around the sun is called revolution of the earth so it say it takes one year for earth rotation it takes one day 24 hours for earth revolution it 365 days and point 365 days and 5.65 days it means 1 by 4th day so overall roughly it takes one year for completion of one round around the sun so this is the revolution so due to that revolution it helps to change the seasons during this revolution sometimes the northern hemisphere this is the northern hemisphere this is the southern hemisphere sometimes the northern hemisphere comes towards the sun and another times the southern hemisphere it comes towards the sun when the northern hemisphere comes towards the sun it is the summer in northern hemisphere and when the southern hemisphere comes towards the sun it is the summer in southern hemisphere and when the northern hemisphere is the summer for example it is the summer here then in the southern hemisphere winter and when it is changed in the southern hemisphere it is summer at the same time the northern hemisphere will have the winter so due to the revolution due to the revolution and by the tilting of the axis the seasons are changed from summer to winter winter to summer so without this tilting of axis and without the revolution there is no change in the seasons it is clear okay finally how the sun movement is changed throughout the year and it leads to the change in the seasons you can see here first <coughs> this is the orbit of the earth here is, here is the sun so this is the earth movement earth is moving like this on the march 21st march 21st and do september 23rd and the march 21st and september 23rd sun rays are falling directly sun is directly on the equator on the march 21st and september 23rd sun is on the equator on this time on the days 
on the days the day and nights are equal in size so equal in size throughout the day so on the on these days on the march 21st and september 23rd we have the not only we over all the world will have the equal amount of day and night in size so these are called the equinoxes equinoxes so what are the equinoxes on the equinoxes the day and night are equal over the earth it means all the places on the earth surface will have the same amount of equal amount of night and day on these days they are called as the equinoxes okay next in the june on the june 21 and december 22 on the june 21 21st june on the 21st june sun is on the <coughs> tropic of cancer june 21st and december 22 this is the tropic of cancer and this is a capricorn so every throughout the year earth is moving from the tropic of cancer to tropic of capricorn from the capricorn to cancer so earth is moving in between these two lines and sun is crossing the equator two times first crossing on the march 21st and second crossing on the 23rd so it is moving on the june 21st sun is on the tropic of cancer and slowly sun started moving towards the south and finally it comes on the september 23rd it crossed the equator and again up to the december 22nd sun reached the tropic of capricorn and again sun starts the reverse journey and after the december 22nd sun starts its journey from the capricorn to cancer so it reaches the equator on the march 20 one and after crossing the equator it reaches up to the 21st june it reaches the tropic of cancer so this is the journey of the sun and it will affect the it causes the seasons so this is the earth rotation and the tilting of the earth's axis are the main factors for occurring the seasons here. Next, temperature belts on the earth are the temperature zones on the earth. We have the three types of temperature zones here. What is the tropical zone, temperate zone and the polar zone or tropical belt, temperate belt or polar belt here. And the sun Actually, sun travels from the traffic of Cancer to traffic of Capricorn every year. So, sun moves in between these two tropical lines only. So, sun doesn't reach, doesn't cross these lines. So, doesn't go after the tropical lines. So, sun rays are falling directly during the year. During the more months of the year, this region receives the sun rays or sunlight or sun energy directly. So, this tropical region is very hot when we compare to northern regions and southern regions. So, this region is called tropical region. So, what is tropical region? Tropical region lies in between the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. This is the tropical zone. Then, temperate zone. When we move towards the north or toward the south from the tropical zone from the tropical zone when we move towards when we move towards the north or towards the south we reach the another zone which is called temperate zone temperate zone so temperate zone lies in the northern hemisphere and in the southern hemisphere so this temperate zone will have the warm summers and very cold winters here 
okay then when we move towards the north or towards the south from the temperate zones we get the polar zones we get the polar polar zones are very cold zones it is a very cold region in this region throughout the year the arctic the arctic ocean is in a frozen condition and almost all the water bodies will be in a frozen condition more than the 6 months so the arctic ocean is in frozen condition for the year and also like us there are no day and light day and night every day every day they have no day and night they will have the 6 months sunlight and they will have 6 months they get the darkness it mean 6 months day and 6 months night at 6 hour we can call it as the 6 months summer and 6 months winter with the full of darkness of course by slanting of some rays they will get somewhat light but it is very dim the sun doesn't go the horizon sun doesn't go the doesn't rise above the horizon what is horizon horizon is the line on this line we can see the sky and earth are the same line and it is the joining line of sky and earth so sun doesn't to rise up the horizon line somewhat some some water sun rises up of the horizon line so this reason will get somewhat heat in summer some of the ice which is frozen on the water bodies on the soil it will be melt it melts due to that melting of the ice some reasons will clear the ice then we can see the flowering small flowering plants and lichens and some of the grass only so in the frozen condition the soil in this region is very hard like a rack so it doesn't allow the roots of the plants so most most